Hello, in this video, I'm going to give a brief overview of the concept of corrective emotional experiences. I'll discuss how you can know what will be a corrective experience for a particular patient. I'm going to give a brief clinical example of a corrective experience and then illustrate corrective experiences outside of the therapy setting. My name is Dr. George Silvershots. I'm the president of the San Francisco Psychotherapy Research Group. And if you like videos like this, I encourage you to uh, subscribe and also to uh, sign up for our free ebook, How You Can Help Your Patients Achieve Their Goals. You can get the ebook by going on our website, personalizedpsychotherapy.com backslash ebook. Okay, so how can therapists know what will constitute a corrective experience? So as background, let's talk about who promoted the concept of corrective emotional experiences. And that would be Franz Alexander, a psychiatrist at the University of Chicago. And Alexander believed that painful emotional conflicts are often transformed within the therapeutic relationship. The task of psychotherapy, according to Alexander, is, quote, to re-expose the patient under more favorable circumstances to emotional situations which he could not handle in the past. The patient must undergo a corrective emotional experience to repair the traumatic influence of previous experiences. So this was a clinical example of the corrective experience that Alexander was talking about. A patient whose assertiveness was stifled by a father who required total obedience and submission became inhibited in all situations that involved dealing with an authority figure. Accessing memories and experiences with his father can help the patient to differentiate his adverse childhood experiences from his present life. However, the main curative element of therapy, according to Alexander, lies in the fact that he can be assertive and defiant toward the therapist without being punished. This type of emotional experience, as it occurs during treatment, we call corrective emotional experience, and we consider it the most important factor in therapy. Now, currently, in, uh, Alexander wrote about this more than 50 years ago, and I would say the current state of affairs in the field of psychotherapy more broadly is something like this that most therapists agree that early relationships play a central role in human development and that the therapeutic relationship in general and corrective therapeutic experiences in particular play an important role in psychotherapy. So a, a well-known cognitive therapist, for example, Marvin Goldfried, made the comment that the core principle of change across all therapies is corrective emotional experience. And here's an example from Carl Rogers, who wrote that in successful therapy, the client moves from experiencing himself as an unworthy, unacceptable, and unlovable person to the realization that he is accepted, respected, and loved in this limited relationship with the therapist. As the client experiences the attitude of acceptance, which the therapist holds toward him, he is able to take and experience this same attitude toward himself. So of course, Rogers doesn't use the term corrective experiences here, but you can see from this description that that's pretty much exactly what he's talking about. So in control mastery theory, the theory assumes that the pay, this is a quote from uh, Joseph Weiss who developed the theory. The theory assumes that the patient seeks corrective emotional experiences through his testing and that the therapist should provide the patient with the experiences he seeks. So the important question for psychotherapists is how do we determine, how do you know what kind of intervention or what kind of attitude by the therapist is going to be experienced by the patient as a corrective experience. And in control mastery theory, we rely on the plan formulation, the patient plan formulation, which is something that we've talked about in previous videos. And you can see more description of plan formulation in the free ebook. 
So I'm going to talk about three, briefly talk about three aspects of the plan formulation that can be very helpful to therapists as a guide for what's going to constitute a corrective experience. So we start with adaptive goals. What are the patient's adaptive goals? What are the pathogenic beliefs or schemas that interfere with the patient achieving their goals? And what kinds of traumatic experiences led to these pathogenic schemas? So in a previous video, I used the example of a young woman who came to therapy because she fought with her husband and she wanted to understand why she fought with her husband. She loved her husband, but she wanted to understand why she chronically fights with him. She, cho she chose a pretty traditional Freudian psychoanalyst who she knew was interested in dreams, but she made it clear from the get-go that she was interested in why she fights with her husband. So the beginning of the fifth hour, after they'd gotten to know each other and the therapist had gotten a history and so on, the patient begins with the following sequence, quote, I had an interesting dream last night. There's a pause. I also had an upsetting fight with my husband. And then there's a silence. Which would you like me to talk about? Now, if we use some of the history that came up in the uh, previous sessions, we can arrive at a rudimentary plan formulation that will provide a very valuable guide for what would constitute a corrective experience. So her goal, we know that her goal in coming to therapy was to improve her relationship with her husband. The adverse experiences or traumatic experiences that she grew up with was primarily centered around a very narcissistic father who required everyone to be subservient to him. The kind of pathogenic beliefs or schema that she developed based on those kind of adverse experiences with a narcissistic father was I need to subjugate myself in order to preserve a relationship, particularly with a man. And so what you see in that beginning of the fifth session is the patient testing to see Will I need to subjugate myself here the way I had to do in my family? And based on this just rudimentary plan formulation, you as a therapist would know that a corrective experience for her would be the, the therapist saying something along the lines of, I think what's important is for you to talk about whatever is most important or meaningful to you. So clearly, one such corrective experience is not going to change the patient's fundamental pathogenic belief, but such experiences over time are in fact corrective. Now I'm going to show you a brief video from a program called GRIP, Guiding Rage into Power, that takes place with prisoners. And I think in this brief clip, you'll see a pretty powerful example of a corrective experience that this particular prisoner is having. We get to remind each other, welcome each other back in who we really are, because when we committed a crime, we forgot. We forgot who we really are. And so you cannot forget that again. On December 7th, 1994, uh, I murdered a woman named Christy Anderson. She uh, is the mother of my now 20-year-old daughter. And on Thanksgiving, I saw my daughter for the first time. Uh, in 19 years since I'd been in prison. For me, one of my biggest problems was my anger and violent and aggressive outbursts. My mother sent me to live with my father when I was nine, and my father used to beat me like I was a grown man. And I think without a program like GRIP, I wouldn't have been able to receive a visit and be open to everything that uh, my daughter Katie had to say to me on Thanksgiving. Uh, the fact that someone who I felt I harmed the most in this world could tell me that they forgive me for what I did.
if one of you is working, you're all doing your work because we all have skeletons in the closet. We all have hurt people. And it's coming clean with that, that is a big part of reclaiming who we truly are. So in this example, uh, there, are two, there are two important elements of the corrective experience, in my opinion. The first one, and the most important one, of course, is that this prisoner's daughter was able to forgive him for the horrendously hurtful and act that he had done of killing her, her mother. But the second aspect that's corrective here is you could see the empathy and the compassion that the people in the room have for this prisoner. This is someone who internally feels like he's a monster and having that kind of compassion from the people in the room, I think is another aspect of the corrective experience. The next video clip that I'd like to show you of corrective experiences taking place outside of therapy is from a classroom of children in Japan. It comes from a documentary called Children Full of Life. And I think it's a really interesting and powerful example of the way in which people can have corrective emotional experiences outside of therapy. <laughs> Mr. Kanamori's class has a tradition. Every day in homeroom, three students read aloud letters they've written. They're called notebook letters. They've written to the other students, and they're a true, surprising record of what these 10-year-olds really think. Happiness. Irritation. Determination. Gratitude, whatever is real, because the other children will pick up whatever isn't. Late April, Ren Sueda comes to class for the first time in four days. His grandmother died. In his notebook, Ren writes about the death, the funeral, his loss. They were worried. They didn't know why Ren was away. Now they're moved at his pain and saddened by his loss. ごく別式だった。最後のお別れに花をいっぱい入れてあげた。僕は涙がボロボロと出た。みんなも泣いていた。バスで仮装場へ行った。1時間ぐらいでおばあちゃんは骨になっていた。おばあちゃんがいなく
She'd been afraid to talk about her father. She didn't want to seem different. She paid a price. Now, at last, she feels safe enough to talk about her missing parent. ね、<笑> They're trying to understand. They all find it painful, some find it unbearable. うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。うん。う
and his accomplishments. So this is, a, I think, a really beautiful and classical example of a corrective emotional experience. And to me, it also shows how someone having some understanding about what the person needs and what is going on with them can very can provide a very precise and powerful corrective experience uh, for the per, for the child in this case. So there are a couple of uh, the the main take home messages um, I'd like to convey from this talk are are two really. First, that corrective experiences are among the most important effective ingredients in psychotherapy. And of course, they're also important experiences in life that are helpful to people. And secondly, that knowing something about a patient or about a person in life can be very, very helpful, a very helpful guide for understanding what kinds of experiences are likely to be corrective. So for in control mastery theory, the patient plan formulation is an example of a useful guide for providing patients the corrective experiences that they seek. As I said at the outset, we have more uh, information on our website and you can log on to the site and get a copy of our free ebook called How to Help Your Clients Reach Their Goals. Just go to personalizedpsychotherapy.com backslash ebook and you will get the, uh, the ebook. Thank you very much for your attention.